Okay. Um, so just, just a little um, refresher uh, before I get started on this topic. So uh, as you guys already know, we position Flespy on one hand as a, as a uh, API gateway slash middleware for telematics. Um, on, the, on the other hand, it can be used as a, as a full-blown backend for telematics. As a middleware, we help you ingest the telematics data into your own application. Um, as a backend, we go a step further, or actually many steps further, uh, with, the, with the tools that al were already demonstrated. You can uh, you know, leverage uh, Flespy for storage, uh, the, uh, various uh, event-driven action automation, uh, data transformation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, in, in, in my uh, presentation, um, I'm actually going to talk a little bit um, of, a, of somewhat of a different positioning for Flespy, uh, which is uh, looking at as a, as a data in integration hub. Um, and interestingly, this is not about some different Flespy functionality. This is about kind of looking at everything that you guys already know, but from a, from a slightly different perspective. So as, as, as an integration hub. Okay, integrations. So why are integrations uh, important? Uh, well, leading uh, telematics uh, fleet service providers out there recognize the importance uh, of easy data exchange between di different systems. Um, so, uh, so what, what, you know, important to emphasize here, so again, you know, looking at these names, which I'm sure you recognize because each one of them has uh, millions of uh, connected assets to their platforms. Um, what's, what's interesting about all these platforms is that they are all horizontal in nature, which means that they don't really cater to any particular, one particular vertical industry. Uh, they try to make uh, themselves uh, useful for, for a variety of different uh, industries. So from construction fleets to, um, you know, delivery fleets to long-haul transportation, local tra uh, transportation, uh, uh, government fleets, uh, municipal fleets, uh, all the type of fleets can uh, uh, get an enormous value from the, from the telematics platform. Uh, but they, all these different fleets from different industries, they may use different internal systems uh, besides telematics, right? So larger companies may run on uh, various ERP systems. Uh, companies may use specialized routing and route optimization systems. Some can, uh, may use some sophisticated operations planning. But what's really important for all of them is to make the telematics data available in, in, in those all other uh, systems. So again, recognizing the importance of the, of the easy integration uh, all these platforms develop numerous ones. So, and just to highlight this point, I'll uh, share some numbers with you to, to understand the scale at which the integrations are done. So, for example, Samsara. Uh, so, they all, by the way, have the what's called market um, uh, app marketplaces to, to to display and run those integrations. So, uh, Samsara, for example, has over 100 integrations listed right now. Uh, Geotab is probably way ahead of everybody else in terms of the variety and the, and the number of integrations. So they have over 300 integrations listed at this time, and uh, Wheelon is over um, 100. So um, going back to Flespy. Uh, so if we were to kind of zoom out of all the specific Flespy functionality that we've uh, talked about today and kind of look at the broader context in which we operate, you may just uh, see this beautiful tree. <laughs> um, so, and I think this is a, a great analogy to highlight the value of Flespy as an integration hub. So you look at the roots, right? And roots of the tree is how the, the, the water and all the useful minerals get into the tree that ultimately make, you know, the, the beautiful applications possible, right? So, um, in exact same way, the, the raw telematics data that, is, that we obtain from the, from the tracking devices from all our friends here who, who, who are here with us today, but um, in, in total we support over 140 uh, protocols for ingestion. 
Uh, so in exact same way, we, we pull all the, well, we don't pull that data, so that data comes into FlashP, and then all, the, all this other, you know, applications become, uh, become possible uh, based on that data. So just a little uh, FlashP basic squeeze on the terminology to see, you know, how, how well you guys listen. So in um, FlashP terminology, what are those roots? Um, what are you guys, are those roots? Exactly. So those are the channels, then that, that's how the data flows. And then, you know, everything comes up and into the, the trunk, which is Flespy, right? This is where all that processing, where the, all the Flespy magic happens with the data aggregation, transformation, and uh, yeah, automation of um, event-driven actions, et cetera. Uh, so and, and as, as we go up uh, from, from the trunk, right, uh, we... Um, so essentially, um, you know, another little basic squeeze. So the branches, what do you think th those branches are in, in FlashP terminology? Streams. Okay, streams. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, so the streams. So we, at this point, have over... Um, so Jan very kind of quickly schemed on all the integrations that we have. At this point, we have over 20 uh, integrations that we've developed uh, using the streams. And... Um, as part of this presentation, I'm going to uh, go into in, in detail um, on them. But here's a really, really important thing, and this is one of the beauties of Flespy. So uh, without touching the device, right, by just having that device connected to Flespy, you can very easily split that data and direct the data into multiple applications at the same time. And it's really important, so I'm going to say it again. So without touching the device and by just having the device connected to Flespy, you can direct and split that same telematics data between multiple applications at the same time. Okay, so now we'll actually uh, jump into you know, more details about the integrations that we have. I think some of them uh, you guys know well about, and some of them uh, perhaps will be uh, you know, new to you. So uh, we, we've, uh, I've defined five different categories and in, into um, which all those integrations fall. So first is the cloud computing platforms. Second is the fleet telematics platforms. Then we've got specialized IoT and telematics tools. We've got electronic toll systems. And we've got generic integration mechanisms. In terms of cloud computing platforms, so we've got all the usual suspects, um, as you've guys seen before, um, AWS, Azure, and uh, GCP, uh, Google Cloud Platform. So we've built connectors into specific services into, in each of these platforms. So for AWS, it's uh, AWS IoT Hub. For Azure, it's Azure IoT Hub. And for Google, it's not Google IoT Hub. <laughs> It's a pub and sub service. So in the past, they had IoT core service, which was decommissioned since. Uh, so the integration is with this pub and sub service. So I think a good number of the um, uh, the the good number of you use FlashP in conjunction with with each one of uh, with one of these platforms. So I'll, I'll share some uh, perhaps interesting stats. So these three platforms uh, combined control. Uh, the majority of the uh, uh, cloud computing market with AWS le leading the pack uh, with 33% market share. Azure follows with 21%, and uh, Google is the third with 8%. So all these um, platforms, they, they market lots of different services um, inside of them, which you can think <laughs> of as different kind of solution blocks. Anything from various databases to... Uh, identity management services to machine learning services, et cetera, et cetera. So AWS, again, is, is ahead of everybody else with uh, 200 services that they have listed right now. Azure follows with 100 plus, and then uh, Google Cloud with uh, 60 plus. Um, pricing is always a very much a moving target with all these platforms because they charge you based on the uh, computing resources usage. But generally, AWS uh, tends to be more expensive than Azure and GCP. Um, AWS is very popular with the smaller companies and startups. This is not to say that uh, some really large companies don't run on AWS. For example, Netflix runs on AWS. Um, but the larger companies and uh, enterprises do tend to gravitate towards Azure, especially if they already have 
number of Microsoft services running in their existing IT infrastructure. From the compatibility point of view, it's, uh, it's, it's easier. Uh, just going off on a little tangent here, we are very often asked if Flespy is hosted in one of these platforms, and Alexei obviously explained to all of you guys here that that's uh, not the case. Um, but also, just a couple of weeks, I wrote an article specifically on that on that question. So if you guys are interested, you know, do check out. But one of the important points that I'm making, and again, Alexei was alluding to, is the Flespius cost predictability. So again, just because AWS and Azure and others, they do use that uh, uh, computing resource uh, kind of metric to, to charge you, and it's extremely challenging to really predictably estimate the how much operationally it will cost you to run on those services. And Flespy, in a very stark contrast to that, is very much manageable because you really get charged only based on the number of entities that you create. And uh, you know you don't have to worry about how much resource consumption that it's needed to run uh, to run all the calculators and analytics and everything that you that you set up on Flexbeam. Okay, so the second category is the fleet telematics platforms. It's the largest uh, category um, by far. So we have eight integrations um, in that regard. Um, so the uh, applications that you enable with Flespy may or may not uh, use or um, give fleet telematics capabilities. So in case they don't, uh, you know, keep in mind that with an easy stream setup, you can direct that same telematics data that you already accumulate into one of the third-party platform and perhaps open up a new revenue stream for yourself. So I tried to come up with uh, pretty common differentiators uh, for um, all these platform, integrated platforms that we have. So I'm going to run uh, pretty quickly through them. Uh, so Wielon is another Gurtum platform solution, which has close to 4 million connected assets, uh, mostly uh, vehicles. Uh, they really do stand out with the very powerful uh, fuel control uh, capabilities and report building capabilities. Uh, GPS Trace is another uh, Gurtum solution, uh, which or is oriented towards uh, personal monitoring, uh, personal tracking, uh, pet tracking, etc. Uh, they mostly sell direct into the um, retail customer type. Uh, but they also do have a distribution um, model which you can leverage and also resell and, and uh, uh, you know, for it's, it's, it's geared toward TSPs in that, in that regard. It's fully built on Flespy, as you guys already heard about, with uh, 220,000 uh, units connected at this point. Uh, so both Wheel and GPS Trace, they do have, um, you know, I'm sure... Uh, most of you notice, but if you haven't, Will and GPS Trace are out there among the hardware vendors. You can feel free to talk to them if interested. Uh, Mapon um, is um, our neighbors from uh, Latvia. So Mapon has been on the market for about 17 uh, years, and they really stand out with their powerful uh, tachograph capabilities as well as digital forms, route planning, video telematics. Uh, Mapon guys are here with us today. Guys, please raise your hands. So, if uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, so if you if you're interested in in their solution, please do talk to them as well. Uh, GPS Gate is not here, so I'm gonna go, go really fast. So uh, they emphasize advanced security and multiple works, uh, workspaces that can be set up for different uh, uh, user types. Uh, okay, so GPS Walks. GPS Walks is the UK-based platform that has existed since uh, 2014. Interesting differentiator for them is that they provide, offer this packaged um, uh, licensing. So essentially a license would include, can include an unlimited number of units. And there's also an interesting uh, offering where, where they have for the one-time cost, uh, you get uh, you know, the, the unlimited uh, usage licenses. Um, Trekar is, a, is the only uh, free to download open source solution. Uh, it's often used as a, so it has a pretty decent um, uh, uh, set of features. Uh, the support is uh, uh, close to non-existent unless you pay for it. 
Uh, and interesting use case for Trackar is that they are uh, used as, um, as a middleware to ingest uh, data from a, a variety of devices, very similar to what some uh, uh, FlexP customers use FlexP for. Uh, Navic-C is another big name in the um, uh, fleet, fleet telematics space. Uh, they emphasize their field service features, video telematics, uh, they, and they have, they have some really uh, flexible and pretty good uh, uh, customer billing tools uh, to allow TSPs to build their customers. Key telematics, uh, key telematics has been pretty low key lately. Um, and somebody actually told me that, that that's not the case, so I guess I don't really know. Uh, but they uh, have some interesting features that are uh, geared towards aviation and marine industries, which is, which is pretty uncommon. Okay, third category is the specialized IoT and telematics tools. So here we have, um, I have three integrations to highlight. Uh, ThingsBoard is the open source IoT platform. Uh, so you can set up some interesting uh, processing uh, rules in it, uh, but it's mostly known for their visualization tools. So you can set up some really nice looking graphs, uh, widgets uh, with the, you know, for dashboarding, et cetera, et cetera. And they have some mechanism for a pretty, pretty complex uh, rule uh, logic that you can leverage. Uh, Muxoptra, Muxoptra is the route planning and optimization uh, software. They gear towards um, uh, companies that can uh, gain a lot from uh, very precise routing, whether it's uh, delivery or you know whatever the bu whatever the business activity is that needs a, a very accurate and predictable routing. Uh, Redlist is the field service management uh, and software for maintenance operations over oversight. F so uh, more and more countries out there implement electronic uh, toll systems. Um, the typical telematics device that you put into, into the vehicles for fleet management is more than capable of getting all the data needed, typically needed by the electronic toll system. So, um, and again, with FLESP, it's just a matter of uh, setting up a stream and just making the same data available to the electronic toll systems. There are two systems that we've integrated with at this point, Bulgarian and Polish um, toll systems. If you, in your country, have uh, the need to uh, use uh, your local electronic tolling, please do reach out and we'll, with all the requirements and um, uh, the documentation, and we will uh, strongly consider integrating it as well. And generic integration mechanism. So this is, uh, I ju I'm just gonna run through this on the high level because Jan already dedicated a decent amount of time uh, to this. Um, HTTP streaming, is probably the most common um, mechanism that, uh, that, that is uh, leveraged just because it's probably the easiest to set up and there's probably a universal understanding among the developers about how this works. We simply execute HTTP POST requests against your endpoint, uh, which in the payload contain the array of JSON objects, each of which represents the, the message. Um, MQTT, with MQTT you really have, everything breaks down to using one of two options. You either run a MQTT client on your side and connect to our broker and subscribe to needed topics after which we, we push data to you. Or you can set up a stream that you would connect to the broker if you run one on your side. So if there's a broker on the receiving end, then you can leverage that, that, that second option with, with MQTT. RabbitMQ is one of the uh, most, popu uh, most popular uh, messaging brokers. It happens to be open source and free to use. Uh, it uses the AMQP standard, so if you use AMQP in your infrastructure already, um, FlexP readily supports it. Um, very important thing, again, this was mentioned, but sometimes the repetition really helps as you, know, you guys are all learning. So if you are on either enterprise or ultimate plans, the, uh, we do support private streams for you, which is effectively means that you may have your private integrations uh, that we can develop for you and maintain them locked and, and, and restricted to your account only. 
Um, if you are on those plans, uh, a certain number of engineering hours uh, is, is, is already included in those plans. So it's if, essentially, if you don't use those hours for a, a, something else, uh, we will effectively develop those integrations for you at no extra cost um, other than you having you know, to pay the regular monthly fee. Uh, and, and then what I want to do is also share uh, two use cases, the actual customer use cases, that I, I hope will further highlight the value of Flespy um, as an integration hub for you. So one is the uh, insurance. So we have the customer in the insurance telematics space. Uh, they ingest uh, data from uh, thousands of uh, telematics devices, and they mostly focused on analyzing accelerometer data uh, and forming the, the driver scorecards, driver scoring based on the quality of the driving. They also um, detect impacts, possible uh, collisions, accidents, things like that. So uh, real focus on insurance telematics. And... Um, over the years, they, they've noticed that uh, they were increasingly getting requests to um, augment the service with uh, some fleet management because, again, the, uh, the, the telematics that are used for this, you know, capture everything that's needed to get the regular fleet telematics, uh, to, to make regular fleet telematics possible as well. So initially, they disregarded uh, those requests, but then they realized how easy it is with FlexSpeed to essentially split off that same data into a fleet management platform and give their existing customers what they um, are asking for. So they got in touch with Wheelon, they set up a commercial account, and from Flespi, uh, on Flespi side, operationally, it was as simple as setting up another stream. So it was a very easy way to upsell into the existing client and be able to collect the um, you know, additional revenue and increase profitability per unit. So at this point, um, between 20 and 30% of their existing client, the core clients on the insurance telematics space also use fleet telematics and uh, you know, provide that additional uh, income. And then the last use case is uh, um, uh, Buggy TLC. So Buggy TLC is our client in New York City. Uh, and they uh, provide uh, what's called TLC car rentals. So what is TLC? So TLC stands for Tax and Limo Commission in, in New York. So essentially to operate any type of service like, uh, to dr even for dry, to drive for, uh, for, for taxi-like uh, service, you have to have the TLC license. Uh, so there are um, a lot of people um, around the city who uh, w drive for Uber or Lyft uh, who you know have that license and they don't want to, for whatever reason, use their own vehicle or may, they may not even have their own vehicle. So this company provides rentals to, to, to those folks, essentially. Uh, so FlexP was initially used um, as a middleware to, to ingest all the data from, uh, from the vehicles. Uh, these guys were initially building their own fleet monitoring solution. E eventually, they switched to Wheelon for that. And again, it was very simple, just as simple as setting up a, a, a stream to wheel on. But in addition to that, they've built this uh, integration uh, using REST API with the Israeli company called Autofleet IO uh, that provides some specialized fleet um, uh, uh, capabilities. In this case, uh, they use their uh, dispatching services and uh, the, the cleaning, uh, car cleaning scheduling service so that you know, as the cars rotate in and out of the... Uh, uh, rental, they get uh, can uh, get all cleaned. So that I think is another really good example of really thinking and leveraging um, Flespi as the data integration hub. Um, so this is uh, this is all for me. Uh, I'll just leave you with this quote. I'm not as good as uh, as Jan uh, at writing quotes. So this one, I uh, uh, Chat GPT very very kindly generated this one f uh, for me and. I know you may scoff, but I, I, I think uh, it's actually pretty brilliant and, and profound. Integrate or stagnate. In the fast-paced digital landscape, the ability of software to integrate determines its relevance and effectiveness. Unknown. <laughs> okay, that, this is all. Thank you.